The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last. As his was a mission of the greatest task. There was only moral degeneration. People clung to idol adoration for all nations. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi al-amin. Nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Wa man ihtada bi hadyeh. Wa sallam bi sunnatihi ila yawm al-deen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Umar ibn al-Khattab may Allah be pleased with him had a number of characteristics and attributes that no one else shared him. He had a number of achievements in the cause of Allah Azza wa Jal that makes him stand out. Now, among them was his love for knowledge. And when we talk about knowledge, we have to segregate between knowledge that is derived from the Quran and Sunnah and that serves the Quran and Sunnah, and knowledge that talks about worldly matters. And it's also important, but it is definitely not important as the knowledge from the Quran and Sunnah. So chemistry, engineering, physics, mathematics, etc. It's important, but it does not come as important as the knowledge from the Quran and Sunnah, and the scholars from both are not equal at all, providing that their intention is to serve Allah, the Almighty. Umar loved knowledge, and he would always encourage knowledge. He was keen himself to learn from the Quran and Sunnah, to the extent that he split the days between him and a partner of his from the Ansar. So whenever he had to go to the market to do his trading and to provide for his family, he had to have a living, he would deputize the Ansari to go and attend the gatherings of the Prophet ﷺ, learn from him and come back and teach him what the Prophet ﷺ had said and vice versa. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, would always encourage knowledge and seek it. And that is why the Prophet said ﷺ that while I was sleeping, I was brought with a big glass, a big cup of milk. So I drank from it until I was full and I could see the nourishment coming from my nails. The milk went into my veins, into my body, and I could see that it was complete and full of this milk. And there was some left in the cup. So I gave it to Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, and he drank it. Now, dreams can be interpreted. Dreams can be interpreted not exactly as they were seen as. And that is why in the story of Yusuf, peace be upon him, in the story of Joseph, that is, when the king saw seven cows being eaten by other cows, and he saw these vision that he saw, it was Joseph, peace be upon him, who interpreted it to be seven years that they would grow the crops and seven years that they would consume most of this crop except portion that they would save and there will come a year that drought would hit the whole area and people would come and request and seek what they have stored. So it was interpreted. So when the Prophet ﷺ was asked, how did you interpret your vision, O Prophet of Allah, of this cup of milk, he said, knowledge. Which means that the Prophet ﷺ was full of knowledge and he gave the remaining of that milk to Umar and Umar had a great portion of knowledge that remained from the Prophet ﷺ. Now, compare this authentic hadith in the Sahih with a fabricated hadith where they claim to say that the Prophet said, I am the city of knowledge and Ali is the gate. So they fabricate hadiths 
of such nature to tell us that Ali ibn Abi Talib is knowledgeable. Do we need fabricated hadiths to know this? We definitely know that Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, is among the scholars of Islam, of the companions. But we also know that no Muslim favors Ali over Abu Bakr and Umar. But these deviant sects, they try to talk negatively about Abu Bakr and Umar and to raise the status of Ali over his true status so that they would divert the Ummah from the right path and separate them from following the Sunnah. And this is all in vain. These are all innovations and it has no weight at all. All Muslims know that the best of the companions of the Prophet are Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman, and then Ali. So Umar was giving this knowledge. Not only that, he was also given the religion, the virtues that were in him were second to none. The Prophet tells us والسلام, in another vision as well, as I was sleeping, I saw the people with shirts on their bodies. Some of them, the shirts reach their chests. Some of them went a bit beyond that and some of them went above that. And then I saw Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, wearing a shirt that he was dragging it behind him. Meaning that the shirt is so covering his body to the extent that it even exceeds that and he's dragging it behind him. And they ask, O Prophet of Allah, what did you interpret it? And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a deen. This was the religion. So people had the religion to their chest, which means it was not that strong, maybe a little bit lower, maybe to the knees. But Umar's religion was so full, was so complete, and was so strong that he was dragging it behind him because it was overwhelming. And this definitely is a compliment from the Prophet ﷺ to Umar, praising his knowledge and praising his religion. Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, used to have in his court only those who were knowledgeable. Because this is what you want to be around you. The type of people you want to be around you are those who would benefit you. My best friends, if they love to fornicate, if they love to party, if they love to drink, definitely I will be one of them sooner or later. This is fact. In an Arabic we have a saying that says, As-sahibu sahib, which means and translates to your buddy is the one who pulls you to what he's doing. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ pulled Abu Bakr to Islam. And that is why he accepted Islam instantly. And that is why Abu Bakr himself pulled six of the best ten of the companions to Islam on the fourth day. Which again shows us that this is true 100%. And that is why one should choose one should select those around him. If you're surrounded by dancers, you're going to be a dancer. If you're surrounded by singers, even if you have a bad voice, voice, you're going to sing all day long. But if you're surrounded with companions that enforce you and prevent vice, who would always advise you, who would always recite the Quran, who would always give you things to draw you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, you will definitely be up among them. For example, it is a fact that when you are surrounded by people, whenever you do something, they say, Jazakallahu khairan, Jazakallahu khairan, instead of saying thank you, or instead of saying cheers. Whenever you see them, they say this word by default. Definitely, whenever someone does something good for you, you would, without even thinking about it, you would say, Jazakallahu khairan. So you will be influenced by the peers that surround you. And who were the peers 
that were surrounding Umar ibn Khattab, this is inshallah what we will know after the break, so stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, had only in his court those who were knowledgeable. He would not allow anyone else to attend. And if we look at those who we accompany ourselves with, if we look at our friends, we usually find a list of humorous, funny, rich, influential friends. We would never have poor friends. We would never have friends who would constantly, continuously remind us of the day of judgment, of hell, of Allah's wrath. We don't want this. We want someone who tells us the latest jokes, who knows the latest movies, who has an iPod with the latest songs. These are our friends who we feel proud to know, not knowing that these friends are leading me to hell. Not willing to understand, not willing to hear the advice of those who are sincere. Umar was not like this. He only gathered those who with knowledge. And among them was Ibn Abbas, for example. And Ibn Abbas is Abdullah ibn Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. He is the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ. He was a young child, but he was a learned child at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. He was about 15 or 16 years old when the Prophet died ﷺ. And the Prophet supplicated for him. And he said, Oh Allah, علمه التأويل وفقهه في الدين. He said, Oh Allah, teach him to understand and interpret the Quran and give him understanding in jurisprudence, give him understanding of Islam and the religion. And that is why he was one of the greatest scholars of Islam. Umar, may Allah be pleased with, with a difference of 40 or 50 years between their ages, used to always let him attend his court. And the companions complained to Umar. And they said, Umar, our kids are grown-up men. They're in their 30s. And they've seen the Prophet ﷺ as well. But you don't allow them to attend your court. And you allow this kid? Is this fair? Umar did not answer them. May Allah be pleased with him. Not out of neglecting them, but he wanted to prove it to them. So one day he said, who would interpret this surah for me? What surah was that? Surah Al-Nasr, where Allah says was what translates to, when there comes the victory and help of Allah to you, Muhammad, against your enemies and the conquest of Mecca, and you see that the people enter Allah's religion in crowds, so glorify the praises of your Lord and ask for his forgiveness. Verily, he is the one who accepts the repentance and forgives. So it's a short surah. بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا. A very short surah. So he asked them, what do you understand from this? So the companions around Umar, who were also companions of the Prophet ﷺ, said that this is a clear chapter of the Quran. Allah is saying that when the victory of Allah comes and when you see people coming in crowds into Islam, ask Allah for forgiveness. And repent to Allah because Allah is forgiving. It's clear. And Umar looked at Ibn Abbas and said, Abdullah ibn Abbas, what do you understand from this chapter of the Quran? And Ibn Abbas, to the surprise of the companions, said that this is a warning, this is a glad tiding from Allah to his prophet that he is soon to die. Where did you get this from? Well, this is what he understood, that the mission has been accomplished and now it is time for you because all the Muslims are coming into crowds into Islam. You have fulfilled your mission 
and it is time for you to meet your maker. It is time for you to meet your best friend. It is time for you to die, O Prophet of Allah. Umar commented, may Allah be pleased with him, by saying, by Allah, this is exactly what I understand from this chapter. And this was at the very end of the life of the Prophet when it was revealed to him. So the companions realized the position and the magnitude of Ibn Abbas knowledge and they kept silence. These were the caliber of people that Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, kept around him. People to give him sound advice based on the Quran and based on the Sunnah as well. He promoted knowledge. He enforced knowledge. How was that? Well, it was reported that Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, would have his rounds, like doctors have their rounds in hospitals. Well, his hospital was much bigger. He would have his rounds round Medina. And he would go to the market every single day and look at the faces of the people around him and would even question those who sell and buy. And if he finds out that this person who is trading has no knowledge of the jurisprudence related to selling and buying, he would kick him out of the market. And he would say, do not spoil our market. Go and learn, then come back. Why was that? It was very simple. The jurisprudence of commerce and trading is extremely important because if you do not master it, you may face the danger of falling into riba. You may sell something that does not belong to you. You may engage yourself in transactions that are not lawful. And this is exactly what's happening in today's markets. Now, this market plunge, this recession, what caused it? Definitely not the Muslims. Definitely not Al-Qaeda. Then who caused it? It was caused due to the people's dealing with what does not please Allah Azza wa Jal. Capitalism is based on interest, on mortgages, on insurance, and all of this is against Islam. It's completely prohibited in Islam, and that is why they were severely hit by it, but while the Muslim banks, with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, was not affected. That is why we have foreclosures, we have bankruptcies, but in the Muslim world, with the grace of Allah, we do not have this because only few among the Muslims who deal in riba, in interest-based banking, and they were severely hit and they deserve it. And what Allah is preserving for them on the day of judgment in hell is far greater because they are defying Allah's instructions. They are fighting Allah and they're fighting his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is why Umar was very clear in this. No one would spoil our markets. Go and learn, then come back. And he used to have his stick with him when he did his rounds. So whenever he saw someone doing something that was un-Islamic, he would hit him on the head with his stick just to reprimand him and say, do not spoil our markets. Not only that, he would do his rounds in the nighttime. And one would not imagine the amount of Allah's blessing in his life. How did he spare the time? He used to go and do his rounds in the market. He used to judge between Muslims. He used to lead the prayer and he used to send the armies and guide them and follow their strategies and plans. And he used to fast all day long. He used to pray night prayer. And he used to also do his rounds around the city of Medina, trying to guard it from any bad thing that comes to it. When did he get time to sleep? Was this a human or a robot? He was a human. But the blessing we do not get from our bodies, from our strength, from our knowledge. We are blessed by Allah the Almighty and He blesses our effort. It's not I who does this. It is not my strength 
or my knowledge. It is the grace of Allah the Almighty who gives me the power to do what I'm doing. And this was Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. He used to do his rounds and he used to guard people. In one incident, he heard a child crying. There came a family and they did not have any place to go. So they stayed as guests in the masjid of an Nabi, peace be upon him. And he heard the child crying. So he came to the woman and said, woman, fear Allah. Why don't you feed this child? She said, I don't want to, feed, want to feed him. I want him to not depend on breastfeeding. I want him to start eating. And he said, fear Allah. He's only eight or nine months old. Why are you doing such a thing? And she said, well, don't blame me. Blame Umar. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said that any born child would not have his portion, his allowance from the treasury, from Bayt al-Mal, until he depends no more on breastfeeding. So as long as he's being breastfed, then he will not have his allowance from Bayt al-Mal. That's why I need the money. And that's why I'm trying to stop him from suckling. And Umar wept and said, Oh Umar, how many children have you killed? How many families have you forced to do this? And he immediately wrote to all his kingdom to all the Muslim state that the allowance is to be given to all, young and old, breastfeeding and those who are children. There is no difference among them at all. This was Umar. He was doing one of his rounds and he heard a woman saying to her daughter, mix the milk with water so that quantity would increase and we would get more money for that. This was at night time. They didn't have any concrete walls. Anyone could hear what's going on in these houses. So the daughter said, you know that Umar forbade this and considered this to be cheating. The mother said, come on, get off it. And how would Umar know about us? Umar is in his place, in his house. He doesn't know anything what we do. So do as I tell you, mix the milk with water. And the daughter said, if Umar does not see us, Allah surely does. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, was astonished with her reply. And that is why he asked his son to marry this daughter, who was a no one. He instructed his son to marry her because she was trustworthy. And she feared Allah and she knew that Allah, the Almighty, was watching. All of this was done in his lifetime in 10 years and six months. He would do his rounds and whenever he heard something, he would correct it. Whenever he heard a woman complaining that her husband has gone for uh, jihad, for a war, he would limit it and say, no one would leave his wife for more than four months or for more than six months. He would correct whatever shortcomings took place in his reign. This was Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him. And this is all the time we have. So until we meet next time, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last, as his was a mission of the greatest task. There was only moral degeneration, people clung to idol adoration.